On today's episode of The Rutledge Perspective, we're talking about the courage of inclusion or how you manage people that are new to your organization or new to your particular department. Now, as you go through your career, one of the things you always want to do is continue to learn. You want to continue to add new tools to your toolbox. And by having these, you actually begin to build up not only a reputation of having quite a bit of skills, but you also begin to develop a level of confidence and a level of competence, not arrogance, but competence in your ability to do a number of things across an organization or within your specialty, because you've taken the time to build those skills and to develop additional tools in your toolbox. Now, the challenge is that as you continue to move up and as you continue to build your career, we always have those opportunities where we're going to be the new kid on the block. We're gonna be new in the department, we're gonna be a new leader. And sometimes, as the leader, when we have new people on our team, it takes courage for us to ensure we are including that person in our team. Now, I have had the blessing of being in a number of different functions. And over my career, I've had a chance to be in accounting and risk management and been in professional services and a number of other things. And in that period of time, I've also had the chance to be the new kid on the block a number of times. And what's interesting about that is I never felt new. You know, we have a saying that says, you may be new, but you're not all brand new. And it wasn't my first job, ain't my first rodeo. But for an organization who has never worked with you before, you can be seen as new or different. But here's the challenge. And I'll talk about how this really showed up in my career in a minute. But the challenge is for that leader who has now brought new people into their, their organization because they want diversity of experience, they want diversity of input and diversity of outlook, or they just want to bring in fresh new ideas, that leader is challenged with ensuring that when they bring people in, they really didn't take advantage of the people they've got there. That's inclusion. Diversity bringing people in, but inclusion is really taking advantage of all those different perspectives. Now, when I went into professional services, it was at a time when these professional services firms were starting to, to bring in people who were from the outside, who'd been in companies, they'd been in clients, that actually seen how things work and how they didn't work. And that's not to say that there was anything wrong with those folks who had just grown up in the firm, but it was different. And it wasn't just the consulting side of these professional services firms, but the other pieces of the firms were starting to bring in people from the outside. And through the whole recruiting process, it was, oh my gosh, we really want you here because you've seen things that we haven't seen. We think it's gonna be great to have people in who've seen something different. And then you get into the firm and you start hearing things like, that sounds really good, but yeah, we're not sure that'll work. Or that's not the way we do it here, so we need you to really kind of follow our process. Now, let me be clear. I'm not talking about the fundamental infrastructure of an organization, how they do expense reports, how they move people around the organization. I'm not talking about those fundamentals. I'm talking about when you're looking at how a company does business and you've brought in people with different perspectives, what are you saying to them when their ideas are different than yours, especially as a leader, because the rest of your team will follow your example. Now, when I went into professional services, I remember going to a specific event and we were talking about diversity at the time. It wasn't diversity and inclusion. This was many years ago. It was diversity. And in this conversation, we had done all of the exercises and we were having this round table at the end. And one of the people that was in the room said, well, we know we get the best and brightest as our partners because we only promote the best and brightest in this firm. Being me. I spoke up and I said, no, oh, that's not true. And it was crickets. And I went on to say, it's not true because the way the firm is structured is you get promoted based on how strong your partner is, what jobs you've been on, and who speaks the loudest in terms of who are they gonna send to the next level. So it's not always about the best person, it's about the best connected person. Now, I probably could have said that a little differently probably could have been a little kinder, a little more compassionate. This was earlier in my career, so I didn't get that. But I was honest and I was truthful about what I'd seen. But what I failed to recognize at the time was that was going directly at the heart of what a lot of these people believed. Because remember, I came in at a time where they were just starting to hire more people that had experience before the firm and were coming in as experienced hires. So for me to come out and say, no, 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 
it's not about being the best in terms of promotion, was going right at those people who were either in a promotion process or expecting to be promoted and either going at their ego to say, well, if, what do you mean? I'm not the brightest or I'm not the best or going at those fundamental things in the firms at the time that were very much related to who you know, which partner you know, that whole good old boy network of the time that I was in a firm. Now, Firms have come a very long way since then. So I'm using this example because it was a real life example for me, but they really have come a long way in terms of recognizing talent and, and being able to truly be inclusive of those that come into their organization. But the point of this in terms of being new, the courage of inclusion, is how are you as a leader, when you bring all of these people into your organization, how are you managing them? When you're sitting in a room and you've got a team that's been together for a long time and you've just brought in someone new and they give an idea or a perspective that is contrary to what has been done, what is your response? Is your response, oh, pff, that's not going to work. We've tried that before. Is your response, mm, okay, well, nice try, but that's not the way we do it here. Or is your response, well, but this is just the way we've always done it. Well, by the way, that is a soul killer for any creative, forward-thinking person. Stop saying that's the way we've always done it. Sidebar soapbox. So as a leader and you think about how you're bringing people in, you must have the courage to be inclusive. It is not about them attacking your ego or your leadership capability or your leadership position. In fact, if you set your ego aside, there may be something in this new idea, in this new process that may take you to the next level, that may increase efficiency or effectiveness. And maybe it's not the whole idea. Maybe it's just the process of thinking through the idea, of challenging it, of getting really around, hey, is this something maybe we could do? Let's talk about how we could do it in the context that will give you a next step that you would not have thought of had this person not been in your team. It's about your courage, about not being fearful of maintaining your position as leader, about not being fearful of your team members saying, well, wait a minute, this is the way we've done it and you've been happy with it. And now this new person comes in and now they're the greatest. Where is your courage in managing inclusion? Because inclusion is the hard part of diversity. Valuing everyone's input, ensuring that everyone has a voice when they come into the room. And while you don't accept everyone's idea as the idea to go, no one is saying that because every idea is not a valuable idea. But every idea has an ability to impact the ultimate outcome. So how can you put yourself as a leader in a position of humility and in a position of confidence that says, I don't know the answers to everything. I hired these people because they had other ideas and because I wanted that in my team. And I'm going to take advantage of it because the better they do, the better I do, and the better the team does. That's what it is to be courageous in your inclusion. So the next time you're looking at hiring, and I'm not saying don't promote from within because there's really power in that as well. But when you next time you're hiring someone, the next time you bring someone into your team, into your department, into your organization, that is different. That came from another part of the organization or that came from outside. Remember why you hired them in the first place. Remember what it was about their experience, about their skill, about their interaction that made you say they would be a great member of my team. And keep that in front of mind so that before you say, oh, that's not going to work or we tried that. Maybe you tried it, but you didn't have the same people. And that may have been 10 years ago and things have changed. Be courageous. Stand in your power as a leader to have the courage to be inclusive of all of the information that could come into you. Because through that information and through that data and that ability to sort through that with different perspectives, you will be able to come out with better outcomes. And that's the Rutledge Perspective today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.